Well, today we're going to learn how to flux weld. I am using my Harbor Freight, not sponsored by the way, Titanium 125 welder. Highly recommend. I have abused the heck out of it, and it's treated me well. So before we begin, who am I? Well, I'm just some guy on the internet. Now, it's important to note, I am not going to teach you how to be a certified welder. I'm not here to teach you metallurgy and all that other stuff. I'm just here to teach you how to lay down a proper bead. That's it. So that you can do good enough work for your home needs. Now, here's how we're going to tackle this. I'm going to go over a couple of really important details that people miss when they start to learn how to weld. Then we'll go through it step by step by step until we get a bead down. So important to note, I'm not building anything today, so I'm just gonna be welding two random pieces of metal together. If you wanna see me go through like a whole build, I have a couple on my channel uh, in the past videos, like both of those things. Now I've got a lot of comments, by the way, about you're gonna melt your GoPro on your helmet like that. It's too close to blah, blah, blah. Um, My welder's not the literal sun, calm down. But if you wanna be wrong, drop a comment below that tells me I'm gonna melt my GoPro or camera or whatever. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. So before we go into welding, what are the things that most welders do wrong in the beginning? Well, one, they go too fast. When you're putting a tack weld down, you're not just going to go and you're done. Despite what TikTok and Instagram has taught you, cold welding's not a thing. you got to take your time. When you're doing a full weld, same thing. Cold welding doesn't exist. Got to take your time. Now, another huge thing that new welders do that they really, really shouldn't, and that's flux welding, MIG, TIG, whatever, is they try to look at too much of their material that they're welding. You don't need to see anything more than like that. You need to see directly in front of your weld where you're going so you can see your seam that you're welding along, and you need to see your weld pool. That's it. You don't care about six inches down the line. You don't care about two inches down the line. You care about maybe half an inch to an inch in front of your weld and your actual weld. That's it. The very first thing to do besides planning your build and cutting the pieces is to clean your metal. Uh, you can't, well, I mean, you can go weld dirty metal and it'll be fine. Like, as long as you can get an arc going, it'll burn off the paint and the rust and everything. But two things happen. One, your weld is not as strong which is kind of a big deal. Uh, two, whenever you have paint and rust and crap all over your metal, uh, it one, it really spatters terribly because you're burning like paint and rust and such. Uh, and it also can smoke, like especially paint will smoke and it makes an awful smell and it's like, ugh, and you just, it's a miserable time. So just clean your metal. Next, we need to arrange our pieces and line them up and make sure everything's gonna kind of fit so that we can start tack welding it together. Now, disclaimer, there's a hundred thousand different ways to do that. For my ammo can storage, I built the base on the bottom, uh, I tack welded the legs to it, and then I added each shelf until I got to the top. That was the wrong way to go about it. So I had to do it a different way when I did the propane thing. For the propane rack, I built both sides entirely and then stood it up and tack welded the cross braces in place and that worked so much better. So it's just a matter of like trying a bunch of different things and seeing what works for you or trying what you think is going to work and then finding out what actually works. So now let's say you have your project ready to tack weld together. What does that look like? So now let's do a tack weld wrong really quickly so you know what it does not look like. We're going to go too fast, just like we mentioned earlier. Then we're going to do a tack weld correctly. Um, both with glue first, because that's going to help us visualize what I'm doing, because I don't know how my footage is going to turn out. Then we'll do it with a real welder. That ain't holding sh All right, so now what about a tack weld really fast? Got us a piece of metal here. So now let's see. We can pick it up. But, like, there's a big gap under there because I missed it. I wasn't paying attention. That's barely holding. That ain't holding jack shit. And I can easily just break it off. So take your time with your tack welds, too. You're going to sit there and wait. That's not enough. We're going to sit there and wait until we have a little pool like that. Watch how slow we go. There we go. So, tack welds in the corners. Nice long tack. Nice tack. 
Okay, so now everything is tack welded on your project. Now you can move on to the full welds. So again, we're gonna go through here and show you what a way too fast weld looks like that you shouldn't do. Then we'll go through a weld fully, like how it's supposed to look. Again, first with glue, then with the actual welder. It's kinda do that, you know, go real fast. Oh, um, we'll do that. And you see how ugly it looks? That's never going to work. You see it's all splotchy and there's not a really consistent bead of glue here or in the welding case, your welding metal. So now we're just gonna run that quick bead. So now look at that. That ain't gonna hold anything. That's tiny. This is a 32nd of an inch uh, welding wire. That's like nothing, man. So take your time. So we pull our trigger, we wait for the weld pool to initiate. This is our tack weld, this is our other tack weld. Uh, so let's get on it. So let's say we've waited a couple seconds and our weld pool has formed. Then we can kind of do our little zigzag pattern very slowly. About this speed, really, depending on the metal that you're doing. I'm not looking two inches in front of my weld. I'm not looking behind my weld. I'm just looking to make sure I'm following the seam. And I'm looking to make sure that my weld pool continues to be a pool the entire time that I am welding. So see how slow this has gone and how deliberate we're being. We're not trying to rush because we want a good job done. And there we go. We've met our tack weld and obviously this is glue. So it's not gonna just stay there, but that's what we got. Now I'm gonna go through the entire length. I would say this is about four inches and this is unedited full length footage of how I'm doing this. Start the weld, look for the pool and then slowly move that pool all the way up. That's the pool right there. And then we just slowly move it on up. Okay, we're coming up on the end here. Bump my hand. So we see here there's a lot of spatter. Um, that's just to be dealt with, or you can buy some anti-spatter, and that'll really help this. Like, if I had the anti-spatter, I could probably just do this and it would all come off. Um, but the point is, we welded this whole thing, looks decent, and this is a very, very strong weld that's going to hold this thing together forever. Now it's important to note, I obviously stopped here because my hand was burning, and I stopped here because my hand was burning. Um, I should be wearing gloves, you should be wearing gloves, but I just, I'm an idiot so I don't, um, but I recommend wearing gloves. And that's all there is to it. I mean, I act like it's no big deal. I just welded something, it's no big deal. It really isn't a big deal, you just got to do it over and over and over again until you don't suck. So hopefully the video was useful to you. Hopefully I was informative and patient enough. And hopefully you dropped the comment below that, oh, your camera's gonna melt, your GoPro's gonna melt. If you did enjoy the video though, give it a like. It really, really does help. Uh, as usual, you be good while I'm gone. I'll see you next time. Have a good week.